Welcome back everybody here on Just the Zack with my continued mission to show you guys an interesting video game almost every single day. An interesting this video game it is. This game is called Crossblitz. It's a dr story driven deck building RPG card game and it's going to launch soon. There's no set release date yet. It's going to launch in early access. We're going to have a look at the official demo. This was my number one game I wanted to have a look at when I first heard of this during the Steam Next Festival event. Uh, coincidentally, it's now the last one, <laughs> but sometimes it might be, uh, you know, the, the, keep the best for the last. Is, is that a saying in English too? It's kind of a saying in German. Yeah, I'm very, very excited for this. I already played 20 to 30 minutes of this, so I, I had a little bit of a first glance, which I'm going to share with you. We're going to continue there on our first run. And this game just oozes high quality polish and awesomeness. I'll tell you that much. This is also, I, I'm not sure why I'm so many pauses, doing so many pauses. So before we jump into the game, you guys are going to see this. This is a Hearthstone inspired card game. But single player, of course, no free to play elements. This is a proper game. Uh, if you have played any Hearthstone adventure games, the solo ones, the proper adventure ones, which were high quality, super much fun, you're getting kind of this. But there's also a little bit of Yu Gi Oh! Maybe a little bit of magic in there. It's its own game. But if you have played any of these, just. Um, yeah, card games I've um, just named, you will be confident with this as well. So first things first, options menu, game options. We have something like for the battle, damage display speed, show opponent's hand. Oh, interesting. Can you do that openly? Ha. Huh. No, let's keep this off. But if you want to, you can have this collection menu, new card alerts, zoom card, fables. I actually like the um, addition that you can turn off screen flash. I actually found it to be uh, at points a little bit too intense. So I might turn that off during a private play later on. Display audio and so on, player data. Uh, for this uh, type of game and for such demo accessibility options, so great options menu. But finally, let's hit into the game. So we have this Fables, which is essentially the story mode, the campaign here. Play through a hero story, unlocking new cards throughout your journey. Later on at the early access slash full release game, there's going to be Tusk Tales. I'm not quite sure what that is. Maybe individual puzzle battles or so. Eh, not the biggest fan of puzzle battles, but that's just a guess. I don't know, might be something completely different. And Coliseum, which is probably going to be like arena mode in Hearthstone. And there's an equivalent mode in uh, Magic the Gathering as well, where you get some random cards. You have to try to make the best possible deck out of that and go through increasingly more difficult battles. But for now, in this demo version, we have the Fables version. We only have one hero, which is a pirate, a lion pirate, so to speak, Redcroft, a mighty pirate who sails the neighboring seas in search of adventure and treasure. And as you can already see, and you're going to see this further, this game has amazing pixel art. It's had so, it has so much style and personality. I love it. So when you select the chapters, I already like this. You're essentially opening a book. Of course, in this demo, at least so far, maybe because I didn't play it for the first one yet. The second, Seafaring Journey, and the third one, Belly of the Cursed Beast, are locked so far. Right now, we only have access to fish out of the body. Wrongfully imprisoned for raiding a supply ship, Redcraft and his private crew strike a deal to win back their freedom. This is what I started already. There's accolades, which is essentially bonus stars, which you gain every time you battle in this game. Um, you gain additional accolades, additional bonus stars for doing some side objectives um, during certain battles, like defeat five enemies in one turn and something like that. So um, right now, we're going to continue here. I'm level four in the first chapter, explore Swindler's Wharf to find a ship. That's our mission. We have actually been imprisoned, but that's where we started. The Princess of the Kingdom released us to send us out on a mission and we accepted for freedom to get out there that sounded like a great deal and in the meantime we've been kind of a little bit forgotten redcroft the great and mighty pirate is actually believed to be dead now we first have to even go anything to do this mission to get our renown back our fame back we have to find a ship that's harder than we thought actually 
And we also have one of the Pirates Cossard, um, or Cossard friends, teammates, advisors in our team. So as you can tell, um, there's already a lot of personality just from me explaining. Before we actually go through the cure, um, because just uh, we have random events where we can talk to our people, learn a bit more about the world, learn a bit more of our characters and other characters, and during battles sometimes as well. This game has great writing, great personality between these characters. It's great. Even when you go to the card shop the first time, you talk to these people and you learn a little bit more about them. That's amazing. As you can see, we have a mini map here. On the first map I started here, we can explore that map and gradually discover more. We have money which we can spend at this card shop. Or let's actually go to this before we do anything. As you can see, here's my deck which I can add it. We have our hero. We have currently 22 HP. We can even XP level up. We can customize our deck. This is the overworld, which as well, you can click this. I love this little bounce here on these different tiles. Beautiful. Okay, first things first. I'm going to continue right where I started off. So I want to go back. I just finished this battle, which you can see I didn't completely. I only got three out of four accolades. This was a tough battle because this enemy Eve had two relics, which were very annoying. And she was level three. Um, the first time I actually fought against her, I lost. And then I went up to this route and defeated a guy here and so on. So you can grind a little bit and explore different side of drop this before you tackle the hard battle, so to speak. If you choose to do a repeated battle, for example, I've uh, fought twice against this Powder Ape here, who also has one relic, what a relic is, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. And uh, the first time you gain like resources to craft, recipes for certain cards, you gain a bunch of resources, of course, money, and the second time you only get XP, but sometimes just level grinding might be interesting. But what I want to do, I wanna go to this relic shop, because I have 1300 money now, and I want to buy a relic, I think. So what is a relic? A relic is a permanent item that gives you a buff, so to speak. And there's different relics. There's like elder relics, if I got this right, which we can only have ever one of. But there's also like normal relics, which we can have three of. So in technicality, if I got this right, we can have an equipment uh, or four equipments, which give us certain permanent buffs during our cards, uh, card fights, and we don't need them. To get these Elder Relics, unfortunately, we need 3,000 each. So that's the question. Do I want to wait? Like the Necrohammer. After a friendly mini dice, gain plus one armor. Interesting. Uh, broken Stone Powder, Elder Relic. Your ship cannons cost one less. What is a ship cannon? <laughs> well, I'm gonna show you guys. No, if you already uh, played Hearthstone, you probably ha have a good idea already. Or we buy one of these minor relics, which costs only a thousand. This might be worth it. Let's see what we could get. A suit plating relic. At the start of your turn, gain armor equal to the amount of bombs in your opponent's deck. Interesting, there's bombs as well. We have uh, this relic, the Combat Earrings relic. After you summon your first pirate mini each turn, give it rush. Interesting. Or the Cinder Suit Grog. At the start of your turn, add the Cinder Suit Monkey to your hat. I think I might actually go with this. So, we can only buy one right now. Bombs are things you might not necessarily see in my demonstration of the game, but uh, you will see this during the level up screen. Bombs are things we shuffle into the opponent's deck, and when they get revealed, they deal X amount of damage to the hero itself. So there's some synergy going with that. I focus going to go more with cannons and pirates. You're going to see that in a second. Um, Rush is always pretty good because this is a little bit or is that like uh, let's go maybe like with Yu-Gi-Oh when the first time or like actually in Huston as well um, if you first time you summon a minion and it doesn't have like uh, extra properties like Rush for example it can't attack it's on the field it can block attacks like a Magic the Gathering if it's across a certain opponent but it can't attack itself only the turn after yeah let's just go with Grog these uh, monkeys are actually pretty good even the rush is also pretty good. Oh, the first pirate. I mean, that's extra damage. I want to go more with an aggressive deck. These monkeys are pretty good because when a monkey dies, it deals like X amount of damage to all enemy minions. And apparently we get one every single turn. That's amazing. Oh, these guys are good. But let's go with rush. I decided for this. Let's go with that. Having one minion be um, having rush every turn is just good. So let's edit our deck, shall we? This is my deck right now. Pirate party. I actually got a de deck recipe, which I customized a bit. Let's go to edit. 
and this is it. And if you played Hearthstone, this looks a little bit familiar already. We also can have up to 30 cards. We all, or oh, well, technically we always need to have 30 cards in our deck. And the, the amount of times, like you can see for the Grog card, which costs one energy, then allows me to draw a card and gain two armor. I only have two uh, in my deck currently. I can have uh, up to four. That is tied to rarity. For example, this is a common card, this Cannoneer, which I currently have three cards. I could have up to eight of these cards in my deck. Ship Cannon 4, this has a higher rarity, this Cutlass Swine, which I can have only two of, and we don't have a legendary card. If we have a legendary card, we can only have one of those in our deck. So this is how I customized my deck a bit. I think this still can be optimized, but so far, it's 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 all right. But before we go dive, uh, deep dive into that, um, let's just go to the relics. There we go, there's our new relic. I want to equip this. Now we have the combat earrings and after you summon your first pirate minion each turn, give it a rush. This makes sense. Well, we are a pirate. We have a bunch of pirate minions. There we go. Look at this, beautiful. And we're gonna make use with this. We have 300 money left. We could actually go to this other shop, which is a card shop. If we go up over here, Let's enter the shop. We could buy some. For example, this card costs seven energy. Seven energy is a lot, which allows us to draw three cards and gain 10 armor, or like, we, well, can't afford anyone. The others cost more. I did uh, buy these brown tooth pirates and these buccaneer pirates, which are like one mana, one attack, one life. You're gonna see what that is once we show the combat. It might sound much if you have never played one of these card games, but trust me, once we're in the actual combat, it's gonna click very easily. Or we could buy this Heart Mage. Or actually, just cost 100. It has a Battle Cry. When we play this for 3 mana, she has 2 magic attacks and 3 health. She gives us, well, well, she restores 4 health to our hero. That sounds nice. Unfortunately, she's not a pirate. And I like having pirates in my deck so far. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go to the next map. And I'm going to show you our first combat. And after that, probably leveling up, because she is the level grid. But, you know, first things first. That is, there's so much. Oh, wait. Oh, this is new. Mana Forge. Okay, let's go over here. I might also show you some character interaction. There we go. Master of Melding. This is cool. Redcroft. It ain't often you stumble upon a big old furnace shitting out and about in Swindler's Wharf. Sit. I kept. And this looks to be a special type of furnace, too. Mulder. Did you just come to Gark? I'm trying to work here. Oh, sorry there, Paul. Didn't mean to offend. Scuff. Excuse me, sir, but do you happen to be a Malden smithy? Smithy? I'm a Malden master. Best there is. Name's Mulder. Pleased to meet you, Mulder. I'm Redcroft, and this is my first mate, Admiral Brass. It's a trap. Captain? We should ask him if he's willing to do business. Master Mulder here could use uh, melt some new cards for us. And skilled melders are hard to come by these days. He ain't the most friendly chum I've met, but if he's as good as he says he is, then I'm all for it. Dumpton Master Skills, yeah? Where'd you learn your manners, Redbone? Uh, <clears throat> it's 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 Redcroft. Your name could be Red Dolls for all I care. But I'm willing to melt for almost anyone, as long as they got the ingredients and proper recipe. I appreciate the help, Master Mulder. I was wondering what I was gonna do with all this junk we've been collecting anyway. Only a fat-headed fool would call those precious ingredients junk! You got a lot to learn, Red Crow. <sighs> Enough chatting, let's get melding! It's melding time! <laughs> I laughed when I tried to voice act, take those with the biggest exclamation marks here, uh, quotation marks, uh, that I couldn't keep consistent with any character. <laughs> there it is. Okay, don't hoard your ingredients. You need the cards, don't you? Cool. I never melded, so this is first impression that I'm sharing with you guys. Okay, we could melt one of these uh, Cinder Suit Monkeys. These are the ones we could have gained every turn from this one relic I sh um, considered taking earlier. And this guy is one mana, one, one, can attack from every position. What a position is, I'm going to show you in a second, has the fleeting tag. Destroy this minion after it attacks. Well, that sounds bad, right? But it has a death rattle. When it gets destroyed, it deals one pyro damage randomly spit among all enemy minions. Oh, that is so much worth than what I had earlier. 
Well, it's just one damage split all. I think I before the ones I fought, at least it seems like it was two damage to every many. Maybe something changed or I actually misread that. Okay, that is so much less powerful then. On the other hand, the one I fought, the one NPC, had like a bunch of pyro damage. So that's probably why it seemed like that. That <laughs> so much AOE damage to me. Okay, fair enough. So um, these are the different ingredients like crystals, silver chips, salt cones, dragon nail, which I obtained throughout different uh, combats. That might maybe be a reason to do some grinding later on as well if you want to try to grind for certain cards. But so far, the one battle I did twice, on the second try I didn't gain any additional materials. So I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work long time, but so far we can craft pretty much every card it seems. Can I craft this one too? Or melt in this time. Let's see, this is a 2 mana 2-3 two, whip grunt. Whenever you play a minion, deal 1 damage to it and give it plus 2 power. So if you want to go with an enraged warrior. So for those who played um, Hearthstone again, the pre-builds here, the, the synergies or the similarities are very close. In fact, I actually wonder if the developers who, are, uh, who have worked on cross splits actually have worked previously on Hearthstone over on, um, yeah, <laughs> over at Blizzard, because it's very similar. It is different enough. And this is high quality, don't get me wrong, Hearthstone ha has his own problem. But the general idea is this is a pirate guy, um, you can go a lot of pirate, pirate synergy, you can go within range. That means when your enemies take damage or are damaged with cards like these, they are stronger. So like high risk, high reward, so to speak. Or when you shuffle bombs into your opponent's decks, that's one synergy as well. Or which I'm kind of going with, I want to have a lot of pirates on the field. And I can also play cannons on the field. When every time I play a pirate, these cannons shoot on our enemies. That's also uh, pretty much all of these things are being found in Hearthstone as well. Which I find interesting. Uh, frankly, I like having played um, Soul or Hearthstone. So I feel very familiar with that. And... So far, I enjoy that, so I'm totally fine with that. So we could also go with the armor fairy. Whenever another friendly mini takes damage, gain plus one armor. Again, with this enrage build, so to speak. Three mana, one six, interesting. And if we want to have a lot of armor. Or the flintlock, battle cry, summon a ship cannon behind this minion. Zero out of four, I think. And these are all the four we can craft right now. I think I want to go with this. Do we have everything? 15 out of four, 12 out of four, 13 out of four, eight out of two. I mean, the colors are different, but that doesn't seem to matter. I think I'm gonna have this, meldable, not owned. Okay, we can only meld these four, but I wanna go with the cannonballs. Three mana, two, four, sounds fine. And we wanna have cannons, so let's go. Oh, cool! Look at this animation, beautiful. Now that's a beauty, eh? Yeah! Okay, let's have another one. I can't. 11, 4, 8, 4, 9, 4, 6, 2. Why? No, I can't. Never mind. Okay, let's get this amazing animation. We have two flintlocks. I could craft more, but maybe two is enough. Let's actually, well, sure. Let's go to back uh, back to our deck again. So on the left side in this overview, we have a bunch of you know factions, war, nature, fortune, chaos. And these are all the filter options for all the cards we own. Currently, we only have these two tabs with all the cards I have. Well. We just started off. I have no doubt that during the full game later on you have like probably, I don't know, 50 tabs or even more. So good to have that you can very uh, apply all the types of different filters to really look for the cards you want to for your deck. So and this on the right side, 30 card deck is my deck. I want to go with uh, and include this flintlock. 3 mana, 2, 4 and a pirate, that's pretty good. But I'm mostly interested actually in the battle cards. Summon a ship cannon behind this minion, that's amazing. Where, uh, yeah, the question right now is how do I implement that? The question, or on the other hand, right now, this is a ship cannon, by the way. Um, it's also a single cat, which is a three mana. It doesn't have any attack. It's inanimated. I pronounce that beautiful. Can't attack or gain power. Has five life, though. But the cool uh, ability is after you summon a pirate minion, deal two pyro damage to a random enemy. And of course, we want to have a bunch of cannons on the field and then uh, summon a bunch of pirates on the field and deal these two damage often. That's the general idea. 
Actually, I mean, it's it's all the three mana. This is the three mana that gives us this card for free, exactly. So this is a great deal. This makes the Flintlock card so cool, it's a prior itself. So let's actually try to craft as many and just sub substitute those with the cannons. Let's go. We have a third one. I can have up only to four. Okay, we can't craft more, but that is fine. Okay, let's go back to edit. That means I'm gonna take out three of these cannons because this is a cannon plus a free two, four minions, so to speak. So all three of those in there. Do I leave this last cannon in my deck, I wonder? I mean, it's not even a pirate. And it's a three mana do nothing. The flintlock makes this so much cooler, actually. But this is the only, well, it's not the only way to gain cannons. I only have this um, musket cannon expert, which is super cool, because five mana is a four, four, and has the battle cry summon two ship cannons in adjacent spaces, then fire them twice. That's so cool. And we have this guy, 6 mana, 6x, six, six, battle cry, give you other pirate minions, plus 2, plus 2. I'm not sure. I, I keep this card as maybe as a finisher. This is very expensive, though. So we can have up to 10 mana, but this so far with what I played is a very aggressive game. Maybe 4 of these splint blades are actually too much. Why do I have 4 of those in my deck? I think that is honestly too much. Yield 1 damage to all minions can be good. I'm actually gonna take two of those out. I'm gonna have one more Grok and I'm gonna take one of these cannon here. So we also give these other cannons, cannon here, so two mana, one, three. At the start of your turn, fire a friendly cannon. So if you have a cannon, that gets fired. Let's try with, to go with this, I don't know. I hope this is smart. So you have seen some deck building uh, level up after we do a combat. Let's actually show some gameplay, shall we? Okay, as you can see, on this tile of the map, uh, I can move. There's different uh, points of interest. As you can see, there's another, this one. There's a battle here. And there's a battle with this one. But we have to move a little bit. There's gonna be side objectives and different passes. But right now you can see this on this direct path. I can only go to this battle with squid faced bomb. But this guy is level two, it even has a relic. Let's actually go over there. We can even go and open the info. What kind of relic does he have? He has Dewey pay uh, Pentel Blues which is an elderly relic. After you play your first death rattle minion in a turn, trigger its death rattle. That could actually be very strong, depending on what kind of deck this guy has. But yeah, let's fight him. Finally, let the battle commence. After 20 minutes into the video, let's go to the core gameplay, all right. Uh, first off, to uh, select the turn order, who goes first, and being first in this type of game is very important. The, uh, the one battle I actually lost, I also started second. And unlike as in Hearthstone, where you get a coin, which is essentially one free mana as a second uh, player, uh, you get nothing here. But it's up to luck. So I'm I'm a red craft. I'm I'm a, I'm I'm a, uh, I'm a always go with the red scissors. There we go, and hope for the best. Oh no, we actually get second. That's bad. But what can we do? Also, when we start the game, these are our cards of our 30 card decks, which you saw briefly before when we edited this one. Um, before we start the game, before the actual first turn goes, we are always going to draw, draw three cards. And as so many other card games, we can choose to just keep these three cards or at the, uh, this very first time at the game start, we can say no. I am going to discard X of these three cards and draw, redraw as many up to three. So all of these cost three. I'm gonna dump them all and draw three new cards. We have one, uh, two, one mana cards. That's good. Make me furball. Some dialogue. Gladly love that. Okay, squid face board has only 14 HP, but it's going to trigger these death rattles every time, right? Uh, the first time. Yeah. Well, we have rush, luckily. Uh, these guys are kind of annoying. That's one mana, two, one. It's a Skull Recruit, also pirate, and has the Death Rattle give another random friendly minion plus one, plus one. This Death Rattle also got triggered. Luckily, there was no other minion on the field. So how does the core gameplay work? Well, easy. Defeat your enemy by bringing their HP. This one has 14 out of 14 to zero. Lose the battle. If your HP, we currently have 22 out of 22, goes to zero, then we lose. So this is our core gameplay. This is the enemy side with these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight slots. And this is our side, also eight slots. There's only three different type of cards. There's monster cards, spell cards, and trap cards. If you played Yu-Gi-Oh, 
it's essentially uh, kind of working the same way. Spell cards is, for example, this Grog. You can just drag and drop them and they will be played. Drag and drop and they have effect. For example, the Grog costs one energy. Energy is always here on the left side, which gets you fundamentally um, plus one every turn. So first turn we have one energy, second turn we have two energy. It's get not replenished, so we want to make sure to spend as much energy as possible. And this spell card has um, draw a card, gain two armor. Pretty nice. This is also a spell card. The spell blade deal one damage to all minions. I don't have a trap card yet. Trap cards work that you place them and uh, and uh, sorry on any of these tiles, and after a certain condition is met, that trap card's effect gets triggered. I don't know. I think of like a falling uh, a trap uh, hole um, type of game, like in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, you play this somewhere and the next minion the opponent plays gets destroyed or so. And then that trap card is resolved. I hope that makes sense. Uh, second or third of are minions. Well, minions are these guys who also have an attack value on HP. If their HP gets down to zero, they die and are not on the field anymore. So for this minion, we have to get this HP down to zero and it's gone. Then it would also uh, trigger this death rattle effect, it's fine. Um, minions can have three different types of attack. Melee, magic, and range attack. When I get my hand... No, I did not mean to play that! I wanted to play this! Oh, I'm so... Oh, that was, that was a misclick by me. I wanted to play this. Okay, we're in trouble now, because that would have allowed me, uh, this buccaneer, to destroy this and keep it. Because we have this relic, this is a one-mana, one-one buccaneer, which has the tough ability, takes one less damage for all, so it would actually, actually would have died. But I could have played it here, it would have the rush ability and would have attacked this skeleton and we would have great off. That was, that was a mistake. Okay, let's go back to the damage types. There's melee. Melee uh, uh, minions which have melee attacks can only attack from this front row. You can see it on the symbols. Minions that have this range attack symbol can only attack from the... Um, Back row. You can still place them on the other tiles. I mistakenly did that with some ranged units. You can place a ranged unit in the front tiles and you can uh, place melee units in the back tiles if you want to for, I don't know, block reason or for the ability reason. You can, but then they can't attack. The only type of minion that can attack from every, every tile, as you can see here visually as well, are the ones who have this symbol, which are essentially magic based things. And now I have to end my turn, uh, called Blitz, because I mistakenly played this spell card. Of course, I only did that to show you guys the spell card effect. Okay, this minion is now going to take the two damage of us, which was uh, essentially we had two armor from the spell card, so that's gone. Okay, I really want to win now. Okay, this is a cool card. This is a Rigbeak, which has the flying ability, can only be blocked by other flying minions. I actually want to defeat this minion, though, so I'm not sure if I want to play this. Because we want to destroy this one. Yeah. I want this to be blocked. And this is a, a little bit the similarity of uh, Magic the Gathering. A minion is also going to always try to attack on its row here. Or column. Column, row. Well, this line. <laughs> I always mix these two terms together. And are going to deal damage to our main hero. That works both ways. If I place a minion here, it's gonna uh, attack through this line. And if there's no other minion in the way to block the damage, the hero itself is going to take the damage. That's one reason why we wanna uh, play maybe a minion in front of the skeleton so that the, our minion fights for this one and maybe hopefully destroys this. Maybe two both get destroyed, but our hero does not take damage. I'm actually gonna do this. Ah, oh, man, the first time was so bad. If I play this, this costs zero though. But this doesn't have rush. I want this to be have rush. Because I don't want this death rattle to trigger and make another minion stronger. How many cards does he have in his hands? He didn't play anything last turn, right? Well, early, a um, early AI in this game is ca still kind of nice to us. Yeah, I'm going to play this here. So this guy has only one attack, has the tough, takes one less damage. Doesn't matter. He has only one life. This one has two damage. It would deal because he is tough. Only one damage to him, but that's enough for the Buccaneer. But yeah, th thanks to our relic, this guy has rush now, can attack or will attack when we end the turn. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Not very mana efficient, but this one gets defeated, the skeleton. And luckily, there's no other enemy minion with this death rattle, which got triggered, but the death rattle couldn't apply to anything.
Okay, what is this? This is a 3 mana 3-2. Three Avoid Ancient Dragon. Cool. Also, I love the sprite work on this game so far. Very cool. Very unique. Very stylistic. Very characteristic. Okay, this is the death rattle. Deal 3 dichronic damage to the enemy hero. That got applied, indeed. Okay, we want to defeat this minion. How am I gonna do this? Could I actually play this, then this? Okay, it's not... Yeah, let's go with this. So I'm gonna play this card. You have one damage to every minion on the field. It's only this one, but I'm fine with that. Then I'm gonna play our birdie. Oh no, I'm not sure if the bird is gonna attack this. But the bird has rush, let's find out. The uh, bird has also the ability better cry. It's going to draw a pirate and then reduces the energy cost of all our pirates uh, in our hand by one, which is pretty neat. Okay. Yeah, okay, it's not being blocked. That's fine. This one is going to attack our pirate, I think. He is not going to be blocked, though, right? So this one attacks, attacks our birdie, which is going to block, right? Oh, this one. Okay, death rattle got triggered. Three damage to our hero. Not nice. It's going to attack the birdie. We're going to take three damage to our hero again. I really got to try to play good now. Okay, draw a card. We have one of those. We have four mana right now. Okay, how am I going to do this? Smartly, hopefully. Also, minions always attack from left to right. So we have two options right now. I could play this guy, the Cutlass Swine, to the left side. This one always, this has rush and always attacks twice, which is awesome. That means if I play this on an empty field, it's going to pretty much immediately attack and deal six damage to the enemy hero. He has only 13 HP, so that's pretty much half of it. That's pretty strong. But we are also a little bit in a predicament, and this thing is going to deal three when it dies, and it, when it attacks also three. So we are unfortunately a little bit in the defensive. I'm gonna play the Buccaneer. We have four mana right now. Might as well play the expensive one. I'm gonna play this first, so that this one has rushed thanks to our relic. It is also a ranged minion, that's why I place it here, so that it can attack from a ranged position. And I'm gonna play this. Oh, I don't wanna play him here. He's gonna deal. Ah, oh, man, I wanna deal six damage. Okay, I'm gonna still play it here. It's gonna attack. It also has rush. Will attack this one and die. Then we take three damage from this one. You defeat the skeleton. The skeleton is not going to play its death rattle plus one plus one to anything because we're always attacking from left to right. So we're definitely playing defensively right now. These two just battled. Yep. This one happened. One damage to the enemy. You also took two, but we have one minion on the field. It's fine. Dusk Drake. Do you have three damage to all minions. Again, I think there's a card which is almost exactly, uh, almost exactly the same in Hearthstone. Do you have three di um, damage to all minions is like... I think in Hearthstone, there's also Dust Drake. Where if you have a dragon in your hand, do you have three damage to all other minions. So this game is definitely inspired by Hearthstone. <laughs> I have no doubt about that, but it's fun. Uh, that is a good foundation to make a great game, and so far I'm having a good, good time. So this is five attacks, death row, three draconic damage on minions. I think that is actually fine, because we have this guy, 4-4, four, four. yeah. Summon two ship cannons in adjacent spaces, then fire them twice. Let's do this, I'm gonna summon this guy here, he's going to summon the cannons, and we're dealing now, what? There we go. Okay, shoot. Shoot twice. You shoot twice to the hero. This okay, cool. This is being resolved. Then you explode, and we have the things. This card is so cool. Five mana, four four. Summon essentially these zero five cannons and deal eight, uh, yeah four times two damage or eight damage total. I love the musket cannon expert. This is a card we uh, I gained from leveling up, and I wanted to get this card immediately once I saw it. It's so important. I think this is the best card we have in our deck. And I think we have two of those. This is so good. Okay, just a 1-1 pirate. This would actually defeat our pirate. Because even though this one has four attack, he's down. He took three damage from the drake, so he has only one life left. Well, maybe we hit him with a cannon, though. That might work. Speaking of which, let's play our pirates to activate these cannons. So first off, this one for two mana. Both can of shoot now. That's also two. Nice. I'm gonna sh activate you as well. We're going to deal four damage again. And we essentially won. 
I'm gonna play our Grog because we can for one mana, draw a card, gain two armor. But we won because, yeah, he's gonna attack for four and that's it. All right, we did it. Even though I made a terrible turn one, we managed to win this camera. And there we go, we have some, nothing gets me more fired up than a Pirate's Brawl. Indeed, we leveled up, cool. These are the Acolytes, I actually managed, managed to get all these side objectives as well. Of course, defeat the enemy is kind of the main objective. Win in 12 or less turns, nice. Destroy at least three of your opponent's minions, we did that too. And take 15 or less damage during the entire battle. And if you do these side objectives, you not just get these Acolyte Stones, but a little bit of extra money, which can be helpful. Also probably a reason why you want to redo certain battles to really try to get these extra stars for the extra money. All right, so we leveled up. We also gained a new card recipe for the Boom Bird. Cool, four mana, one, seven. Rush flying when this minion deals damage to the enemy hero, add a bomb to the deck. If you want to go for bombs, that would be cool. I don't want to, 700 money is cool though. I think we might already be able to buy another relic. Hmm, I wonder if I want to do that. But let's level up, we are level five, level grid. So that's the level grid. There are the RPG mechanics, so we have four different pathways right now with Redcroft, the legendary pirate, and we can tackle them in any order from button to top. I went all into Cannon Barrage because I wanted this guy, because I knew immediately this musket cannon expert, as we just saw, is a great card, I wanted to have this immediately. I could have also gone like one in each, or just pirate party, or just, you know, two here, two here, for example. You can tackle this in any order you want, but I knew I wanted this card immediately. So what are these different uh, trees, so to speak, associated with, well, with, with different build varieties? Essentially, as I said, Pirate's Party is built around, you know, you get um, combat to draw a pirate minion from your deck, you get cards, you get buffs like extra HP, you get the special cards, this is a spell, you have three pirate damage to a random enemy, repeat for each pirate you control, and a final card. Summon six pirate minions. I think this is like a quest card, also reminiscent, reminiscent to uh, quote unquote Hearthstone. Let's actually try this out together because I'm not 100% sure. Deal damage equal to the number of pirate minions you control to all enemies. So I guess this trick is when we have summoned six pirates with this on the field with Red Wing Raid. So yeah, this tree is associated with just summoning and having a lot of pirates. Then we have Blood Boil, which has a synergy essentially with, you know, Berserker. Whenever another minion's damage, give this minion plus one power. As I mentioned earlier, if our minions gain damage, overall we get stronger. That's the synergy here. Then we have Bombs Away, which starts with a Jolly Bomber, Battle Cry, and Death Rattle. Add a bomb to your opponent's deck. Cool. And the payoff is gain 10 armor and then deal two power damage to a random enemy. Repeat for every bomb in your opponent's deck, for example. So this is built around synergy if you really want to go all out with bombs into your enemy's deck. And as we've a little bit seen in this battle, I wanted to go with Cameron and Barrage, mostly because I think this card is so good, regardless of what kind of build you go. But we can go with the final result. Let's try this. Ready, aim, fire. Start your turn with plus four pyro damage. Ooh, that's hard to get though. Fire your cannons three times. Destroy all your minions, minions though. Ha, huh. that is a good payoff which can win you the game. And this is being built around actually uh, with this pyro wish, which I have unlocked but didn't put into my deck. Pyro damage plus one. Has an additional plus one pyro damage for every pyro wish that died this game. So you want to play these guys, get this pyro damage, Somehow up to plus four. We just need to start the turn plus four pyro damage. I'm not sure if we have any other card that gives us pyro damage. And even though that sounds... Oh no, we can also re uh, reallocate these uh, points if we want to. We get one point per level, but I don't want to. This sounds amazing, but I don't care about pyro, pyro damage. It is good for our cannons, but frankly, I think it's way more important to just have a bunch of cannons and uh, make sure they fire instead of uh, making sure they fire a lot of damage. So I'm going to be lazy right now and say I will just take two additional HP. Because I think as our deck is right now, that's pretty decent. So let's continue. But I could have gone with this big payoff with this quest card. I think it's a quest card. It wasn't uh, mentioned in the tutorial, but so far, so as often as I mentioned... <laughs> Um, Hearthstone, I wouldn't be surprised if it would work that way. So that means we have this thing on, uh, either it, it's activated from the very get-go or we have to play it in the first round or something. And when we have this trigger, which was like 
uh, start with plus four pirate damage, then it gets activated. Maybe that just counts as a trap card then. I was kind of hoping to be able to get another flintlock, but we can't. Didn't get that many resources. So let's go to this combat. All right, level four. A fairy, merry return. Uh, looks like we found your fairy. My name's Eve, lion boy. Remember it. Yeah, this is just the when I before I start the the recording, when we met her the first time and managed to defeat her. So I like that these characters are reoccurring as well. Pardon me, Miss Eve. Didn't mean to insult you. Why are you being polite to this she -imp? She tried to kill us. Yeah, that's the Abraxas is the one being sent with the princess to accompany us. I love our relationship with him, question mark, um, already. Abraxas is awesome. All part of the red coat, Braxy. Red coat has been established early on as well. We are essentially a Robin Hood pirate. We don't steer from the poor, only from the rich. And so on. How chivalrous rare in this day and age, especially among pirates. A shame I have to end the life of such a charmer. We'll be seeing about that, Miss Eve. Have it, yeah. All right. Rematch against Eve. Uh, maybe we have 1,000. Maybe I should have gained another relic. Because uh, last time she was pretty strong. I wouldn't be surprised if she still is super strong. And of course we're going second. That is terrible. Ah, the musket. I kind of... No, we don't want to keep this card, even though this card is so good. Uh, this Cutlass Swine is pretty good, though. No, let's go. I want to have some early cards against her. No more playing around your finish, Lion Boy. Oh, man, I hope I can win against her. We'll see, Lass. I've got a few surprises yet. All right, let's see. A vicious Scythe, Elder Relic, Common Start, yeah. Deal damage equal to the number of cards you've played this turn to run in an enemy. I actually think this wording is a little bit misleading and wrong. Because it's more like combat end or turn end. Because every... T yeah, this is not 100% sure. It, it kind of seems like this triggers at the start of combat. But this is... Yeah, deal damage equal, damage equal to the number of cards you've played this turn to run in an enemy. That triggers at the end of the turn. Yeah, combat start. Triggers after pressing the blitz button. Okay. That is the... It actually explains that in the upper left corner, yeah. I do like that they explain that separately. And we have these pop-ups because combat start and after pressing the blitz button is a little bit... I mean, okay, I get where they come from. Because combat actually does start when we play the... Do that button. Okay. So uh, that's on me. I misunderstood that the first time. Golden Stein. Start the game with Elder. That is Elder. Oh man, it's 4 mana, 4-2. Four, How? Oh god, Swift Strike attacks twice, add two um, doubloons to your hand when she plunder is when she destroys an enemy minion. No matter which time in the turn order, which is very strong. And doubloons are essentially a, yeah, a free mana point which you can spend whenever you want. Okay, she's gonna deal damage equal to the amount of cards she's played. How are we gonna deal with Elda right now? Not this turn, that's for sure. She's gonna deal eight damage to us, but... I could play this minion, but what would that do? I'm gonna rather draw a card. We just kind of hope. Okay, salt your rogue, deal one damage to an enemy minion. Okay, that's good. I mean, still a two mana. She's gonna attack twice, that's not nice. Oh, only once. Oh, wait, swift strike strikes minions without taking return damage. Okay, it wasn't double strike, it's swift strike. Which actually is even worse. Because we can't defeat her by blocking. But that's fine because we have Rush. That means I'm gonna play this guy, the Brown Tooth. I love this guy. He looks so amazing. So it's a 2 mana to 2 death rattle at a random pirate minion to your hand. Yeah. Let's play this here. He has Rush, so he's gonna attack and destroy Elder. That is good. Unfortunately, Eve is still going to take these two doubloons because of Elder. Elder's death rattle. But that minion was dangerous and I'm very happy that's gone. We're still in a losing position right now, and we have to change that. Luckily, at least they, she can't trigger here, deal one damage. Same with that, because we don't have any minions on the field. <laughs> uh, plunder, game plus one plus one. Triggers after this card destroys a minion. That's also a little bit annoying. Okay, we have three mana. If I play this, we can make this go zero mana. We could play this to attack immediately. That doesn't matter that much. I could play this to destroy this one. I think I'm gonna draw a card with my Grog first. Hopefully it's a pirate. Nice. Now we can play the birdie. I love our birdie. I wonder how that works. 
gain plus one plus one if it uh, destroys a, car, a minion. But it has only one health, so if it gets destroyed, it still gets destroyed, right? So I'm gonna play the bird in a way and hope. He's gonna attack the bird and die. Also, I want to draw a pirate now and set the cost of every pirate in our hand down by one. That is awesome, because now we have these guys, the Buccaneers. Should have played that here as well now that I think about this. Regardless, let's play these guys. They are for free. We could also keep them in the hand. I mean, zero mana pirates are amazing if you have some cannons on the field. But I think I want to apply some pressure now. And our enemy played so many cards now to deal one damage, so hopefully she's running out of them. Restore for health, uh, for health to your hero. I'm fine with that. Okay, cool. Plunder. Okay, sure. Okay, you are attacking from the back row, apparently. I thought the melee would attack first. That is terrible. Okay, good to know. Good to know. We're gonna defeat that. That is fine. Four mana. Next turn, I want to play this. You're going to be defeated. You are not going to be defeated. That's a little bit sad. Hmm. Okay, we have Rush. The first part we play has Rush. That means I want to play you to hopefully destroy this thing. The others do not have Rush. I, I could play this guy for Rush. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, I don't necessarily need to play this guy melee. I mean, he is a melee unit itself, but maybe having two cannons that, that shoot immediately is better. Okay, we have three mana left. I want to play these two. The question is, in which order? Probably still here. You got, just gonna defeat this one, yeah. But it's still good enough, I think. You have two. You can kinda keep that in mind. No, I think I'm gonna go with you here regardless. Let's go with this setup. Sure. There we go. Let's play as much as we can. Okay, one defeated. You bring in one damage. You defeat this thing. Get defeated as well, but that's fine. You defeat that one. Take one damage. That's also fine enough. Cool. We are okay. I kind of actually hope they destroy our Buccaneers somehow. Because I want to... Ah, God. Yeah, that's the thing with the position right now. I want to play this musket guy, but it's not the best thing yet. Hmm. How are we going to do with this? They're going to... You have six cards in your hand. And you're not playing any of those. That kind of makes me worry, honestly. I mean, even if you don't attack, you still attack back if you get attacked, right? So if I play you here, you're going to summon one cannon. She's going to attack. I could also just summon you here. You have Rush. Make that one go away immediately. Maybe that's good enough. Or I just play this guy. It's tough. No, I'm just gonna play this guy for now. I'm gonna take two damage here, but he's gonna defeat this one. Still playing slower than I actually want to, but I also want to get the most vol uh, value out of our Buccaneer cannons here. 13, 14, and we took so much. You're not playing any cards? Is that an AI thing, or are you waiting for your turn of doom? That makes me so anxious. Seven cards. You're not playing anything. I think the AI is just very nice to have, all things considered. Oh, we can play this guy. He gets Rush, and all the other pirates gain plus two plus two because of the battle cry. I, wow, with the bananas. Also, very Hearthstone-like bananas essentially give permanent buffs. Um, sure, let's go. You defeat this. We could have played this here actually for the damage. Would have better, been better because then I would have won the game. Yeah, that was a mistake on my part. Well, let's see what you do. Come on, seven mana, eight cards. Give one damage to an enemy unit. Okay, come on, make something cool with all the cards you have, Eve. Okay, I think the AI is playing nice with you. Like, come on. You have this vicious size, deal damage equal to the amount of cards. You have so many cards. I think she still has from the um, first minion, Eve, or what was her name? Elder. I still think she has some, at least one coin, maybe even two coins, which is zero mana, one mana. 
So that means this turn she could have gone up maybe to 9 mana to play a bunch of cards to defeat all these minions, even the 7 HP minion, and she didn't do that. Yeah, let's just play this, even if it doesn't trigger, because we won now. Okay, luckily the AI is very, very, very nice to us. I hope at least it's the AI being nice and not the AI being bugged out, which might be... I mean, she played like one card there. Maybe she bugged out, I don't know. Would also be very hearthstone like honestly. Okay, we got all the objectives, a bunch of money, amazing. We defeated Eve. I wonder if we could now buy... Ah, no, we need 3,000 for one of these very good relics. Elder relics. Again? How? Hey now, don't be too upset, Miss Eve. It ain't easy stopping a mighty pirate like myself. Be careful, lion boy. An ego like that could get you into trouble. Enough with the frivolous banter. Why are you trying to kill us? And who is this grub character you mentioned before? Tell us now, before we end you. Well, aren't you caught the hot hat? Fine, I'll bite. I work for Grub, the notorious info broker of Swindler's Wharf. He sent me to take care of your little gang. Wouldn't be good for business if the masses learned that the mighty Redcroft was actually alive, and back in Swindler's Wharf, no less. A walking ghost hurts his bottom line. Is that the scrub fella as the spineless lily liver spreading false rumors about me? That coward's gonna regret messing with my reputation. Hm. Your pirates are all the same. If your boys have a bone to pick with Grub, then I suggest you pay him a visit. His eyes soar of a high height of it's just west of here. No, it's about that time. Caught my second wind. Catch your ruffians later. And there she goes. Come back at once, Vixen. You have yet to pay for your insolence. Let her go, Braxy. We've got more important things to do, like finding Grub. Ain't gonna let someone sending assassins after us go about this merry way. <laughs> and as you can see, we have this map we can travel to. There's this area we can explore. We have a passage. Move to a different area. Oh, there we go. We have this area to the right, then there where there's a shop, then we have this, where is probably another treasure or oh that's another relic shop. And then we have the boss battle. I would like to show you guys the boss battle, but we're kind of running out of time for this recording. And I think I was able overall to showcase this game to you. Cross Bliss, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't have a full release date yet, but it's going to come out sometime in early access. And I think this demo itself is absolutely amazing. The All I can say is for the early access and for the full game, we need more content. Way more heroes, more things, more cool story. But this everything I've seen so far, I enjoy very, very much. Yeah, I could only go into as like mega nitpicking right now, but I don't have anything else to say. So... Yeah, please tell me what you think of Crossbells. Please tell me what you think of my commentary on Showcase there. Feedback is always greatly, greatly appreciated. And I'd, I'd like to hear your opinion. Also, consider sharing this video because that helps me out so much. Would be so amazing. Make absolutely sure to stay awesome. And we're going to see each other in the next video.